so it's really sort of Laura kept sort of things like when well, you step on some unsavory types. I'm sorry, he stepped on lots of savory types like some of the HIV. Yeah. I mean it's just a whole thing about the way it's transmitted and the people who get it right back to that again. It's just like remember the early days when you say, well the sweater queens don't have HIV, mm -hmm. the other guys do. Yeah. Hey, remember that? The Asians don't, yeah, yeah. It's like many these stupid little gays, I didn't make them, but people did make them, about who, who looked like they had HIV and who didn't. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm told that I don't look like I have AIDS, but I have actual AIDS. I have 30 T cells. So, you know, by all accounts, it's AIDS. Mm -hmm. But do I look like it? Oh, and um, something else, I was in the news recently about how they were talking about reopening the baths. <laughs> um, that, I'm just curious if you guys have any, um, like, sort of perspective on that. They never closed, you know. It's like, they may not be called the baths, but they're, they're out there. People are going to find a way. And I remember in the early 90s going to a meeting, and they said, are you here for the meeting to close down the bathhouses? I said, no, I'm here to tell you to keep them open. <laughs> And I, they, I, like, we actually had a little bit of a talk. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, this is another thing, you know, um, that um, around that whole culture of shaming people for enjoying sex. You know, in the early 90s, I think before the second Bush administration, or when I don't know when came into, but you know, we had programs that actually worked much better because you, you empowered people, you know, at least you tried to give them tools so that they made informed and empowered mm -hmm. choices, then under Bush we had abstinence only changed everything. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that that, you know, was a setback because a lot of the pro I remember that when they had the thing that said prevention didn't work. And um, they asked, I was at a meeting at CDC and they said, so how do we measure prevention or whatever? And because it doesn't work. I said, well, it depends on what you're measuring. I said, the CDC just undertook a testing camp. And so they got a lot of new process. They got a lot of new people to know what their HIV status they got from the testing. So you ran a successful testing campaign. That doesn't mean prevention doesn't work. But then nobody stood, nobody challenged them, and then they created all these policies, which I think set HIV prevention back. And then when the Global Fund to fight HIV, to get malaria, went back to effect, they actually funded a lot of programs that really were not sex positive. Um, didn't work, absence only, mm -hmm. criminalized key affected populations, and, and also um, violated a lot of human rights. The epidemic is raging in the American South right now, yeah. around HIV, is a direct result of George Bush and his anti-abstinence. His, 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 uh, abstinence. It's called abstinence. Abstinence. And said fucking word. <laughs> um, abstinence, follow the policy. It's just not good science. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know the word. I mean, I'm illiterate, but I just I don't like that word. Oh. You don't believe it. <laughs> no, I don't. So maybe we were, um, I remember when we were, because this is starting to get more political, yeah, yeah. Uh, that we were talking about bringing that act up. Mm -hmm. I remember one of the guys at Mike Plus goes, um, act up? I can't even sit up. You want to act up? <laughs> 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 yeah, Well, that was you know, I was on the Human Rights Commission, I was advising the Human Rights Commission, and uh, Mayor Lee appointed a guy who was the regional campaign director for the Reagan Bush campaign. Like the big guy, the big money guy, was appointed as a human rights commissioner in the city and county of San Francisco. And he was made the chair of the LGBT advisory committee. And I said, you can't chair of the LGBT advisory committee until you apologize and ask forgiveness from the people that you helped kill. <laughs> <laughs> well, did he apologize? He did not. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I went to Teresa Sparks and I said, are you aware that Mayor Lee has appointed the defraught Greek Orthodox priest who was the regional campaign in Northern California, no less. He killed our people, the regional campaign director for the Reagan Bush campaign, and chair of the LGBT advisory committee, and we were doing, I was planning a panel to uh, 
help keep the nonprofits in our city that serve our community because they've left, they're leaving. And the one that I was particularly uh, trying to keep was the Transgender Law Center because for fuck's sake, that's here that that happened. And that is, that's a huge thing that we should be very, very proud of. That's one of the jewels in our crown, I think. And, uh, you know, they left. And they left with no fanfare, they, they just left. And they've gone to the East Bay, okay? So I was putting a panel together. I wanted to keep the, I wanted to get something out. And uh, some of the younger members of the committee, uh, you know, love the new chair. You know, whatever. But uh, he, asked, he said, you know, I have a really good friend who's the president of uh, the Spur. He said, maybe we could get her to come down and be on the panel. I said, she can't be on the panel. Spur is the biggest advocate. It's on their masthead. It's, uh, it's, we are an advocacy group for developers. <laughs> it's like, the point is not, it's not a discussion. It's a panel. <laughs> it's a flat thing that faces us and explains something. I said, this is not a question and answer. So, and, and, and I was actually, one of the, one of the members wrote me a nasty letter saying, you know, you're such a jerk and why are you being so mean? And all that stuff. And I'm like, read up, buddy. Read up, kid. You know, you gotta know who you're, you know, you're advising the Human Rights Commission if you don't advise correctly, you could fuck this up in a big way for all of us. And they are doing that. Um, so I would say that, yeah, we have to do something about that. I went to the bar, you know. They didn't see a story there. <laughs> the, the Reagan Bush guy. You know, and you mentioned that it was Rock's. Now, Rock was part of our community. I'm from Los Angeles. Rock was part of our community. I remember a summer where my friends and I counted 61 people we lost. Reagan's best friend. <laughs> so what is that motherfucker doing on the Human Rights Commission? And why hasn't anybody said anything about it? And that's our Human Rights Commission. That's the basics. That's the shelter, the food, the air, the medicine. That's not the little stuff. You know, so what are we doing? We have already rolled over, as far as I'm concerned. To ACT UP, I went to ACT UP, and of course, it's run by a 24-year-old, and he doesn't know anything he doesn't remember anything like that, so in his little solipsistic view, it didn't occur. And that's our failure also. But he's got to go, <laughs> and then he's got to apologize too. I'm going to make a room for all that, and then we'll let them all out at the same time. Just do it as one thing. I want to spend a lot of time. But we got to do something about those. Act up doesn't act up, and that's a, that's a real problem for me because that's those are your first line people. Those are the people that are supposed to be making signs. They're supposed turning over fucking police cars that are supposed to be making a ruckus when this shit happens and they're not doing it. It's not my job, it's not my thing. I like science too much. So, you know, it, it's just, but it, it bothers me that there is no act up. It is, it's here, they meet at Thursdays, on, on Thursdays at seven, but do they act up? Not unless it is specifically tailored for the 18 to 24 year olds. Yeah, I think, I think I'm not sure what that was. It feels like now we the next generation of that. It's like different tactics because we have a whole different way of reaching people now. We knew that the same thing we could have done was to act up and we had to get the internet then. It would have been a whole different ballgame. So I really think, I mean, just what Ben said, you know, I, I don't know. I can't even make it to the 80s march anymore because our feet hurt. Thank you. 
not necessarily have to do it, yeah. but to, I know um, this has happened in our office because there's all these young gay people, and you know, there's been things that have come up that they know nothing about. And one of the guys said, well, tell me about it. Sure. Educate me. And because they, they don't know. They didn't let us know. You can't, you can't know what to ask. Yeah, yeah. So it's as elder. Yeah. I think it's explaining, it's about explaining it to them. Because I, mean, I find that what happens a lot with my generation is that we sometimes wag our fingers and say, you don't know what we lived through. Well, no, they don't. But I don't expect them to because I don't know what the whole class was like. I mean, I know I can read about it. I'm an intellectual knowledge of what the Holocaust was like. But I lived through a different Holocaust at a different time. And I don't expect, I mean, the person that was talking on the phone there is my best friend, and he's 32 years old. He doesn't know shit from shit. But he knows, he's heard my story, he listens to me, and he's on prep, and we have a great friendship, born out of the commonality of the things that we find interesting together. But I never get to shape you know, about being old. In fact, we'd always say to me, Stop saying you're so old. Um, but it's just about really coming to each other with respect and explaining things. It's really, it's the oldest lesson in gay rights work. We're here to just explain to you. Just want to explain to you the situation that you may not understand. And I think we do that with compassion and love and understanding. It's met that. Larry, you had a question? Well, I, uh, I moved from California to Nebraska uh, because there was a recession going on in 78 and I could find work there. And I, I stayed there for much longer than I intended, but my last job was at the Montford Beefpacking Plant in Grand Island, Nebraska, which whose existence was based on He's going to close down his union plant and open up a non-union plant in Grand Island. And he destroyed his union. And the management there didn't know how to explain themselves. It was the, 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 the turnover rate was over 100% <coughs> a year. There was injuries all over the place. There was a lot of it finally became a national scandal how the industry had, uh, had so speeded up their production that people were getting uh, carpal tunnel syndrome from repetitive motion. At any rate, then I came up here in 84 and uh, expecting to find friends. just walking in the same kind of juggernaut that we were before. And nobody's aware of this yet. And I think that uh, well, I think it's time that people become aware of the kind of society that we've created. 